What is going on beautiful people? Welcome back to another video and today marks the third and final uh, chapter in the saga of my short series on how to stay strong, fit, powerful, healthy, sexy AF, nice and mobile, injury free, free from pain when you are a man over the age of 30. So the first episode we did on this has a thumbnail that looks like this. To search for this video uh, and that was basically how to apply certain principles that I believe help men training over the age of 30 in an upper body session the second video the thumbnail like this were uh, kind of the same principles slightly tweaked overlaid onto a lower body kind of strengthened muscle built functional muscle building session um, and today's video basically is all around how to apply these certain principles and again a few different principles around a conditioning session so there are a couple of main objectives uh, that I believe would be pretty important for men over the age of 30 when it comes to conditioning work in the gym. And the first one would be that we don't want to compromise the muscle gains that we're making in some of the strength and hypertrophic work that we're doing. Uh, so we want to stay, you know, we want to build an engine, we want to have capacity, we want to stay nice and healthy. We're aware that whether it's zone two cardio, kind of interval training, whatever it may, like EMOM work, AMRAPs, CrossFit style wads, whatever it may be, they are beneficial for us in terms of uh, metabolic states and body fat percentage and organ health and everything. But at the same time, we don't just want to do a we don't just want to do thousands of hours of zone two work solely so that we're you know losing all the flipping muscle mass that we're building. So maintaining muscle mass while doing our conditioning work is kind of the first main objective for men over the age of 30. I believe in the second one is to make sure that we are protecting our joints and protecting our connective tissues. Uh, and keeping impact fairly low and making sure that we're kind of balanced and symmetrical. I've already done my warm up today, so getting straight into it then, my first hack of the day for a conditioning session, guys, is to start your workout with what I call a heavy cardio set or heavy conditioning. This is where basically we are doing some resisted work. So I'm doing three movements. I do, as kind of an extra little bit of context for this, I do a lower body exercise, a push exercise and a pull exercise and I effectively do them in the form of like a little circuit and I do around about somewhere between 10 and 15 reps of each exercise at a weight that realistically if I was going maximally I could do around about 20 reps of. So it's slightly sub-maximal but the fact that I'm doing you know 13, it's a random number, but 13 reps of something that I could do 20 reps of means that I'm working at a, a, a kind of a capacity level that would allow me to go straight from that lower body exercise straight over to the push, straight over to the pull. And basically I'm kind of having maybe 60 to 90 seconds between rounds and then three or four rounds of this. This is then nice and consistent overall with again the fact that we want to kind of keep the muscle mass that we're building. This is a great way to kind of get nice and gassy so you're going to feel out of breath, you're working your heart and lungs. You're keeping the impact fairly low. You're working as much at full range as possible and maintaining the muscle mass that we've built in the other sessions in the week. The exercises that I have chosen today are as follows. We have trap bar deadlift for some lower body stuff. We then have some filly press. Uh, so some unilateral work for the upper body. So that's, that, that's the push holding a dumbbell in each hand, but single arm presses. And then onto the pull movement, we're actually gonna do some split grip pull-ups on the bar behind me. So one hand over, one hand under. We are gonna do six each side. So six kind of left over, right under, drop down, literally no more than kind of like two big deep breaths back on the bar and then six more on the other side. Trap bar, followed by Philly press, followed by split grip pull up, about 60 to 90 seconds rest and then straight back in. Let's see how we get on.
And there we have it, beautiful people. That is section one of the workout done. That is the heavy cardio, the most intense of all the sections of the session. That leads me perfectly onto hack number two. Uh, and that is basically to ladder down the intensity and ladder up the volume as the session goes on. So that basically means the fancy kind of pseudo scientific way of saying that we start off with something that's a little bit more intense with a little bit more rest uh, and lower volume total. And then effectively the intensity goes down and the volume goes up as the session goes on. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something not quite as heavy but a little bit more total volume and a little bit less rest. Uh, and then we'll finish off with something that we'll talk about later, which is again, even further along that kind of spectrum. So in terms of this middle section, I like a bit of heavy cardio, basically three kind of like functional bodybuilding exercises to start with, which is what we've just done in the form of trap bar, filly press and split grip pull up, but executed in a way that is a little bit more kind of metabolic bodybuilding style kind of focus on operative word there being metabolic because it, obviously we're looking for an aerobic benefit considering this is a conditioning session. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to a middle section and I'm a massive fan of something called CCC, which is compound carry condition. This is where we perform a compound exercise, uh, a carry of some sort, and then a little bit of conditioning work. We then have about 90 seconds to two minutes break, probably around about 90, and we do this three times through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do 15 reps of a behind the neck push press, little bit of a push. I'm, my pec tendons are a little bit tight, so the fact that I'm kind of, I'm doing it deliberately to hold it in a back rack position to make sure that stretches out slightly. 15 reps, uh, kind of a moderate weight. Again, something I could probably do roughly 20 reps of. If I went maximally, then a carry, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be brave and commit to you now I'm doing it on video even though I don't wanna do this. I'm gonna do five lengths of a sandbag carry uh, on my stomach. And basically that just kind of forces me to breathe uh, in a slightly more kind of concentrated way. And then what I'll do is I'll finish off with 15 calories on some erg kit. 90 seconds break and then go around three times. So this compound carry condition is a perfect way of again, striking that balance as long as you execute it in the right way. You've got a little bit of balance and stability. You've got some functional carries and moves that I'm a big fan of. Again, with the sandbag farmer's walk, sometimes kind of a sled pull, even though it's not a carry as such, it's kind of still kind of fits the bill. Uh, a little bit of functional bodybuilding at the beginning, then the carry stuff, and then literally just a bit of pure aerobic stuff to finish off with in that little tricep, in that little CCC tricep. 90 seconds, three rounds through that. Let's see how we get on. Section two done, CCC in the bag. I think my hands are shaking. That was good, I enjoyed that. I have actually done a lot of conditioning uh, in the last kind of few weeks since being in the States, coming back. Did a lot of hiking, 
but not working in this kind of cardiovascular zone, which is why it's one of the reasons I wanted to film this today, actually keep myself accountable to doing some flipping cardio. Uh, behind the neck push press felt good. The carry felt all right. The last two on all three rounds, last two lengths, it's not the weight. It's just the fact that you can't breathe properly. Diaphragm can't pull down, you can't truly expand uh, kind of your lungs and your rib cage because the, it's like slightly hypoxic because the flipping sandbags on, on, on your belly basically. Um, as soon as I put that down, that was a relief. And then the bike erg actually felt all right, holding a slightly better clip than I thought. So three rounds of that, about 90 seconds, two, more like two minutes really, in between, plus section two done, onto section three, and effectively my kind of final hack uh, for conditioning work, like functional conditioning work for men over the age of 30 that want to keep the muscle mass that they're building in the gym as well and obviously keep strength and speed and power and all the stuff that comes with that but also protect their joints and their connective tissues. So conditioning work, like cardio work effectively to build that capacity, heart and lung kind of fitness but through that lens. Section one, we obviously had the heavier cardio stuff with the intensity a little bit higher uh, and a little bit more break between kind of functional bodybuilding exercises, but executed in a slightly sub-maximal way, and executed in a way that gets a really, really good metabolic effect as well. Then the mid-range conditioning stuff we just did was the CCC, the uh, compound carry condition. And then finally, we are now continuing along that intensity and kind of volume paradigm, intensity going down, volume going up. And we're basically just gonna do a low impact arm wrap. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm effectively gonna do 10 minutes of uh, ski erg, and then every two minutes on the minute, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna do four burpees, and I'm gonna do six, literally just air squats, and then straight back on, I'm gonna do it every two minutes. So that's just the way of kind of breaking it up. So though it's kind of mixed modal, I'm doing different things to again get a benefit of different joints working as such, no kind of repetitive strain, but the fact it's literally being done back to back, there's no rest in this, um, it's a good way to kind of keep a fairly steady heart rate. Not really zone two if it's only 10 minutes, probably a little bit higher than that, but we'll see how we get on. But again, intensity gone down, volume gone up, and that is my effect kind of third and final hack. Let's see how I get on on in this third and final section.
and as if by magic, the session is done. Third and final section done. I'm actually feeling a little bit fitter than I was kind of expecting, to be honest. I was just saying it to Danny a second ago, uh, considering I've done a little bit of hiking. I haven't really done anything in the last kind of four or five weeks. But there we go. Those are kind of my three main hacks uh, for full body conditioning to keep the muscle that you've got and to keep you kind of mobile, healthy, low impact, protect the joints, connect the tissues and keep you kind of injury free when you're a man over your 30s. And again, in my opinion, a couple of minor, tiny little tweaks on your programming can have a huge flipping effect to just keeping you in the game a little bit longer and looking after your body for kind of years to come. Uh, moving down the intensity spectrum and up on kind of the volume spectrum is a big one. As you saw over the course of the session, we started off with some heavy cardio, some functional bodybuilding movements. Uh, that was really, really good. Then into a CCC and then into a low impact <coughs> AMRAP. The only real impact of that basically was just kind of landing on your hands when you're doing your burpees. But at the very least, all of us should be doing, should be able to handle a little bit of impact that can be kind of good for connected tissues. You're not flipping Soviet Union, jumping off a three meter diving board into an empty swimming pool and seeing if we can land it without breaking our legs. Legit, that is what they used to do to test their high jumpers. So there we go, guys. Those are my kind of three sections of a conditioning session. You get some heavy stuff, you get some mid-range stuff, and then you get some kind of closer to zone two, zone three work for kind of 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever your time domain may be. But it's a good way. Obviously, today took me a little bit longer because I'm, I'm guiding you beautiful people through kind of uh, through the process. But overall, all of that, that whole session can be done from the kind of the end of the warm-up. Could be done in... I don't know, maybe 50 minutes, I think. Any questions, please do put them in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy this video, please do smash that like button. Danny, do you think they should smash that like button? Yes, hard. Oh, Jesus, got a bit saucy there, didn't it? Please do smash that like button for myself and Danny. Please do put down any questions you got in the comment section below. Uh, and as always, beautiful people, stay strong, stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will see you in the next video.